Hello and welcome back everyone. Thank you very much for tuning back in again. This is the final portion of the textbook reading screencast for the Song and Tang Dynasties of China. So let's go ahead and finish the reading right here with the final section and please remember to continue answering the key concept questions that coincide with the reading. Changes in Chinese Society China's prosperity produced many social changes during the Tang and Song periods. Chinese society became increasingly mobile. People moved to the cities in growing numbers and the Chinese also experienced greater social mobility than ever before. So the most important avenue for social advancement was the civil service system. Levels of society. During Tang and Song times, the power of the old aristocratic families began to fade. A new, much larger upper class emerged, made up of scholar officials and their families. Such a class of powerful well-to-do people is called the gentry, and the gentry attained their status through education and civil service positions, rather than through land ownership. Below the gentry was an urban middle class, and it included merchants, shopkeepers, skilled artisans, minor officials, and others. At the bottom of urban society were laborers, soldiers, and servants. In the countryside lived the largest class by far, the peasants. They toiled for wealthy landowners as they had for centuries. The status of women. Women had always been subservient to men in Chinese society. Their status further declined during the Tang and Song periods, and this was especially true among the upper classes in cities. There, a woman's work was deemed less important to the family's prosperity and status, and changing attitudes affected peasant families less, however, Peasant women worked in the fields and helped produce their family's food and income. One sign of the changing status of women, though, was the new custom of binding the feet of upper-class girls. When a girl was very young, her feet were bound tightly with cloth, which eventually broke the arch and curled all but the big toe under. This produced what was admiringly called the lily foot. Women with bound feet were crippled for life, and to others in society such a woman reflected the wealth and prestige of her husband, who could afford such a beautiful but yet impractical wife. The social and economic and technological transformations of the Tang and Song periods permanently shaped Chinese civilization. They endured even as China fell to a group of nomadic outsiders, the Mongols, whom you'll learn about in section two. So there you have it, everyone. That's a brief history of the Tang and Song dynasties in China. Hopefully you can gauge a better impression of how China was truly changing during the dynastic era of its history. Thank you very much for tuning in, and good luck with completing the rest of the key concept questions and the rest of the lesson.